I know that uh, here we have at the core of this bolt is a K9 TV superstar who really believes that his world is real until Truman Show like he escapes the set and realizes, wait a minute, I'm not this super powered dog. That's right. I don't know when it came to sort of researching this, whether you, I don't know, do you talk to Buzz Lightyear? Do you talk to Keanu Reeves? <laughs> Have you talked to Suicide? <laughs> <laughs> was there inspirations that you kind of took on that you said, okay, let's have a look at other times this has been done, like Three Amigos, Tropic Thunder, and Galaxy Quest. And well, yeah, the Truman Show. I mean, it's a great premise, you know, yeah. to have a character completely have a false understanding of what their world is, and then to have that sort of strip away and then find out what really is important. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's a great uh, framework for a movie. And I think that the, the nice thing about our film is, is we had in the middle of all that a dog, and a dog is so pure. You know, mm -hmm. a dog is a dog is loving, and loyal, and and practically nothing else. And so to be able to take a character like that that is so trusting, and to put him into a, into a, a premise like that really seemed to work. And and to give him such an over the top, ridiculous, fictional framework for his understanding of the world, and to have that all go away, and then be left with this this one idea that he holds on to, which is that I love my owner and she loves me, is so dog. And so that really, we kept referencing back to this is that idea that this is a movie about trust and this is a movie about the risks and rewards that come with giving your heart to somebody and, and argues that it's worth the risk to, to achieve true fulfillment. That's the, that's the one thing that kept making, that informed our choices, our choices and, and made the movie special, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to always get the message across to you that all cats are selfish and evil. I think that's uh, <laughs> a universal truth as well. It's important to sort of keep keep it <laughs> Keep reading words and turn it around. No, yeah, it's, it's a redemption story. The cats, yeah, it's, 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 it's redeemed. Like, yeah. It takes a lot to turn a cat, though. A whole hour and a half, really. That's, that's true. It does I, take I, nine, I tell you don't like it, but it's a redemption minutes. story for cats. It's true. We, we, he has an idea that a lot of people share that cats are no good and evil, uh, but ultimately he comes to appreciate that, that Mittens is a very good character yeah. and that cats are capable of being very unselfish and good. Yeah, that's our secret agenda. Like <laughs> you both still don't believe in it. No, both Chris and I own cats. Like, I'll show you uh, pictures. You know? so it's, our, it's our hidden agenda. <laughs> I should say that for both of you, I know, Byron, you, you, you've been a, a story artist and a, a animator, I think, with, uh, you did Milan and Chicken Little and Pocahontas and, and uh, Lilo and Stitch, and, and, mm. and the same kind of for yourself. You did Chicken Little, Meet the Robinsons, and Milan. This is your first time as directors. Oh, yeah. And you kind of come on, uh, as, as with many Disney and Pixar movies, changed horses in midstream. You come on with 18 months rather than four years. Mm. I don't know whether you both at that moment realizing that this is the gig that's on offer we're anyway reluctant because it's a, it's again it's a tall order it's been done before but it's a tough one to turn and mm -hmm. start a whole new movie almost it for is, 18 months production yeah it's it's quick you know it's one of the one of the faster movies i think it's been produced and it's a it's a big movie too it's got a big scope to it you know it's a road movie so it means we can't use sets over and over so it presented a lot of challenges for the crew but the, you know as much stuff as we kept throwing at the crew and raising the bar and asking them for more and more they never said that we that we can't they kept doing it and uh, I think that's a credit to the, the people we work with. It was a daunting idea at first when John asked me to work on the film just because of the sheer magnitude, the, what, what a massive undertaking it is to, mm -hmm. to make one of these films. But it's John Lasseter. When he asks you to do something, you say yes. Uh, and I mean, he had just recently become our boss at Disney and he's so respected and so loved in the animation industry. And, and when John closes the door and asks you to do something, you do it, and 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 ultimately it was a great experience. The crew was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Being able to work with Byron and being able to work with John Lasseter, who really knows his stuff, was able to help us in every way. He he improved the movie in every way that it, it can be improved. He was with us from the beginning of the initial story ideas to the character design to the set design to animation choices, everything mm -hmm. else. I mean, he really offered so much. But he's also just a really inspiring leader because he loves, he just, he's so passionate in his love of animation and that was always something that kept us going. Mm -hmm. Well, since John, I think it was January 24, 2006, he becomes you know, the chief creative officer of not just his own Pixar, but, yeah. but Disney as well with that mm -hmm. huge buyout. And, and there's that sense he's a, a, a major task ahead of him. It's like the Beatles have to take over Elvis's career and move through the 60s and try and sort out his, his uh, particular kind of floundering. I don't know whether with this movie, 85% on Rotten Tomatoes, great reviews, but the That's big great. cheeses still sort of think they're waiting for Disney's third coming. They had the second coming with Little Mermaid. Now they're sort of thinking, where's the third coming? It puts this huge expectation mm -hmm. on everything that John's been doing That's with true. Disney. Mm -hmm. And it actually buckles people's expectation unless something completely leaves their shoes halfway across the theater in, in amazement. 
they're, they're, not, they're always going to say, oh, it's nearly there, we're not quite there yet. Yeah. Mm. It must be slightly kind of daunting knowing that that's the sort of expectation from Variety and all the sort of heavy handers who follow mm. Disney and, and Pixar. That's true. You know, yeah. the, 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 the uh, expectations for the movie are, I think, were are very, very big and stuff. But, I, you know, the thing that John has done so well in only just two years is he's completely transformed the environment at, uh, at Disney Animation. And now, you know, people on the, on the crew invest in the films and they, they, they uh, take ownership of them. And that's, that's, I think, due to John's philosophy of leadership is he wants people on the crew to believe in the, in the stories they're working on. And that also comes down to us, to Chris and myself, to provide uh, a story that they care to work on, that they, that they love, and that they, that they want to take home to their families and stuff. I, I, just that cooperative um, camaraderie and that, that feeling of family at the studio is so strong, I think, due to John's leadership. Yeah, I think that what people want to see is they want to see consistency like, like Pixar has demonstrated, and, mm -hmm. and we're the beginning of that, and hopefully it will sustain. I think it will sustain. And, and when people see one great movie after another after another, then that will be you know John Lasseter's work, mm -hmm. and uh, and so I think that that's that's just what people are looking for. And the amazing thing is, as much pressure as there is on John Lasseter, as much weight is on his shoulders, he doesn't seem to show it. You know, mm -hmm. he he just believes he believes in in I think his own abilities, and he believes in the talent around him, and and he. He just thinks if we just keep making good choices, keep making good movies, that's all we have to do and we'll be fine. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's something very comforting about it, having someone like that around you. Mm -hmm. Rock and roll. I mean, give him the friendly finger to go.